Hello students, how are you all? This is Paful. I hope you all are doing fine. In today's video, we are going to understand another very important topic, which is part of 11th standard NCERT biology. The name of the chapter is control and coordination, and the topic which today we are going to discuss is nothing but the CNS, that is the central nervous system. So, dear students, what exactly is central nervous system? So, let me tell you that the central nervous system mainly consists of the two parts, which are very important parts of our body. One is nothing but the brain, and the second is nothing but the spinal cord. Now, dear student, the adult human brain is basically protected inside a heart skull, which is called as cranium. On the surface of the brain, there are special kinds of membranes, which are called as meninges. There are three basic meninges which are present on the surface of the brain. They are nothing but the innermost membrane, which is on the surface of the brain, is called as pia mater. The middle one is known as arachnoid mater, and the outer one is called as dura mater. So let me tell you, the innermost membrane, that is nothing but pia mater, is the softest of the three membranes, and it is quite vascular. So it is a membrane which actually consists of the blood vessels through which the blood is supplied to the cells of the brain, that is nothing but the neurons of the brain. Then talking about the middle membrane, that is called as arachnoid. The word arachnoid comes from the word arachnida, which in Greek means web-like. So this particular membrane has got a web-like appearance. At the same time, it is intermediate in its thickness, so it is neither very soft nor very hard. Talking about the outermost membrane, which is called as dura mater. So here, dear students, the outermost membrane dura is the toughest uh, membrane because it is made up of fibrous connective tissue, and the main function of dura mater is majorly to protect the brain. Talking about the human brain, the human brain is divided into different parts, such as the forebrain, the midbrain, as well as the hindbrain. Now, if you consider the forebrain, the forebrain majorly consists of the cerebrum. Now, dear students, the forebrain is also called as the prosencephalon. Prosencephalon consists of cerebrum. So, dear students, the cerebrum is the largest portion of the brain, which majorly forms the outermost part of the brain. So, the cerebrum consists of basically the outer part, which is called as the cortex, as well as the inner portion, which is known as medulla. Now, dear students, the outer part, that is cortex, is majorly divided into many, many folds. And these folds are majorly made up of cell bodies of the neurons. Cell bodies are often grayish in color, and that's why the outer part of the brain is majorly called as the grey matter. Similarly, the inner portion of the cerebrum is considered as the white matter. Now, this white matter is because of the myelin sheets which are covering the exons of the neurons which are present in the cerebrum. So, the myelin sheet is basically nothing but made up of a fat layer which is called as sphingomyelin. So, dear students, because of the presence of fat in the inner portion of the cerebrum, the color of the inner portion of the cerebrum becomes white. As a result, the inner portion of the cerebrum is called as the white matter. Now, dear students, inside the cerebrum lies a portion which is also called as the thalamus. So, dear students, thalamus is also considered as the relay center of the brain. It is considered as a relay center because all the sensory impulses which are coming from different parts of the body towards the brain are passing through the thalamus. At the same time, once the impulses reach to the various portions of the brain, the impulses have been processed and similarly the motor impulses are coming in the downward direction and they are also passing through the thalamus. And hence, as a result of that, thalamus is considered as a relay center. Now, dear students, below the thalamus also lies a portion which is called as hypothalamus. Now, dear students, hypothalamus is very, very important because it controls different functions of the body. So, hypothalamus has the center which controls our hunger, thirst, as well as it has also certain neurosecretory cells which release certain hormones. Now, dear students, the inner portion of the cerebrum is made up of certain areas called as the hippocampus as well as the amygdala. So, these portions of the cerebrum together are also considered as the limbic system of the brain. Now, what is this limbic system responsible for? So, dear students, this limbic system is majorly responsible for our emotional behavior. So, the emotions include rage, fear, anger, frustration, attraction or even the sexual behavior of humans is because of this particular portion called as the limbic system of humans. Now, dear students, talking about the overall functions of the brain. Now, we all know that brain basically controls both the involuntary as well as the voluntary functions of our body. So basically the brain is the control and the processing center of the body. That means brain controls different voluntary activities like walking, exercising, as well as all the different movements 
At the same time, dear students, it also controls the involuntary activities of the body, like for example, the functioning of various organs of the body, hunger, sleep, wallowing, etc. Also, students, remember that the cerebrum is divided into two halves, which are nothing but the right cerebral hemisphere as well as the left cerebral hemisphere. So, basically, the cerebrum is divided into two halves with the help of a cleft. This cleft consists of a thick band of nerve fibers which is called as corpus callosum. Now dear students also remember inside the cerebral cortex lies different areas like for example the sensory, motor as well as the association areas. So the sensory areas are the one which basically receive the sensory impulses which are coming from different parts of the body to the brain. At the same time the motor areas are the ones which basically convert the sensory impulses into motor impulses and from the motor areas the impulses are going from brain to various parts of the body. At the same time, the association areas are the ones which are present between the sensory and the motor areas so that the impulses are going from the sensory to the motor areas via the association areas. So majorly dear students, the function of our cerebrum is to basically receive all the impulses which are coming from the body and process those impulses and accordingly send the motor impulses to various parts of the body. Now dear students, along with the prosencephalon that is basically the cerebrum, there is another structure which is also part of the forebrain and these are nothing but the olfactory lobes. So basically here the word olfactory comes from the Greek word olfaction which means smell. So dear students, the olfactory lobes are mainly responsible for receiving the sensory impulses which are related to the smell. So these olfactory lobes dear students consist of the receptors which basically help in receiving the impulses which are related to different kinds of smell. The brain processes the information of these impulses and we are able to detect various kinds of smells which are present in the environment. So dear students in this particular video we have majorly understood about the prosencephalon that is the fibrin of the central nervous system. So if you have understood this particular concept dear students please like the video and share with your friends. Also if you are new to the channel please make sure you subscribe to One Page Biology. So that's it for the day dear students. See you all in the next video with some other biology related concept. Till that time this is Prafal signing off. Take care of yourself. Thank you so much. Bye bye.